This video is looking at the 2016 FRQ question number two. It deals with balance sheets and T accounts and the money multiplier reserve requirement, all those fractional reserve banking type questions. So it starts off by giving us a balance sheet here. It gives us reserves, not excess, and required reserves. It's simply stated as reserves. It's important to note on this one. But it's the balance sheet from First Superior Bank. We assume that the required reserve is 10%. It's a very important thing to note. Um, what is the dollar value of new loans that First Superior Bank can make and explain it? So the big thing we need to figure out here is what is the reserve requirement? What do we have to keep in the vault? So we know we have $2,000 in demand deposits. We know that our reserve requirement is 10%. So our required reserves are $200. Our reserves right now are $200. So we at this point can loan out $0 because there's nothing else to le left to loan out. There are no excess reserves. All of our reserves that are labeled here are required reserves at this point. All right, so B, Mr. Smith deposits $100 of cash in a demand deposit account at First Superior Bank. Calculate the maximum amount of new loans that First Superior Bank can now make. All right, so $100 worth of cash is gonna be deposited into the demand deposit. We have $2,000 in there currently, that's gonna bump up to $2,100. So our reserves are gonna change. We know that this is all required at this point. So our required reserves are gonna go from 200 up to 210. But we also have another $90 left over and that's gonna be our excess reserves. Only 10% of that new deposit is gonna go in the required reserves. $90 is gonna go in the excess reserves. So when it comes to the question, how much can they loan out? What's the maximum they can loan out? Choose to loan out right there? It's gonna be $90. All right, that $100 deposit minus the 10% reserve requirement ends up being $90. Now it does say calculate on this one, so you might wanna show that math of some sort of how you got that number. Okay, so part C, as a result of Mr. Smith's $100 cash deposit, calculate the maximum change over time in each of the following in the banking system. So loans, first off we wanna see how much is our loans going to multiply into. So we wanna remember we're looking at the maximum change over time. So this is different than an immediate or an initial change. So how do we figure this out? Well, we know that we have excess reserves of $90. We know we have a 10% reserve requirement. That 10% reserve requirement means we have a money multiplier of 10. Every dollar that gets pumped out there multiplies by 10. So we have $90 in excess reserves that's gonna get loaned out from his deposit. That $90 is gonna get multiplied by 10 and it's gonna eventually turn into $900 in loans that kind of goes out into the system. So the full maximum potential of loans that can be made from that initial deposit is $900. Now, the second part asks for demand deposits. What can that multiply into? This one is going to be, start with his $100 first deposit that he made, then that's gonna multiply into the system because it's gonna get loaned, 90% of that's gonna get loaned out and it's gonna come back and forth and ground again and again and again. That $100 counts as part of that, that big demand deposit there. So that's gonna get multiplied by 10. The maximum amount of demand deposits that can be made from that initial one is $1,000. All right, so that's part C. That is probably the hardest part of the question, getting that little wording down right there, okay? Now, Part D asks for, as a result of Mr. Smith's $100 cash deposit, calculate the maximum change over time in the money supply. So, once again, maximum change over time. So, we have $90 that we're gonna loan out. This is gonna get multiplied by 10. That $90 is gonna turn into $900. All right, we're not counting that initial deposit because that money existed before. That $100 that he came in and deposited is gonna turn into $1,000. But that $100 existed in the money supply before the deposit, it existed after the deposit. So when that $100 turns into $1,000, it's only increasing by 900. So we could also look at it this way, that $100 times 10, it turns into $1,000 minus the $100 initial money that was already there is gonna turn into $900. So either way we look at this, it's gonna be an increase of $900 into the money supply. All right, part C, I'm sorry, part E down there, 
provide one reason why the actual change in the money supply can be smaller than the maximum change you identified in part D. So in this case, the change can be smaller than the maxim maximum if one of two things happen. If people hold on to money in the form of cash, if I decide to put it in my cookie jar, under my mattress, or I just keep it in my wallet all the time, or I have a safe at home, that's not in the banking system. I'm keeping it here. It's not going through that money multiplier. So in this case, anytime people hold part of their money as cash, it indicates that the money multiplier is going to be smaller than what we calculated as. Also, if banks don't loan out all of their excess reserves, it's also going to decrease that money multiplier. So that $100 doesn't turn into $1,000 necessarily, it might turn into a little bit less than that because people hold money as cash and banks don't always loan out all of their reserves. All right, hopefully this video helps you, but if you're still in need of a little assistance, I've got two videos dealing with balance sheets available as well. One just kind of reviewing the whole concept, the other one providing a, a worksheet that you can work along as I'm going over it. Uh, both of these kind of get into the different types of questions that will be asked on FRQ questions. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you guys next time.